looking at the culture is heavily spiritual. You can see this played out in almost every aspect of Okinawa society. So, all across Okinawa are scattered Utaki or sacred groves, such as these. Uh, there's literally thousands of Utaki all over Okinawa. Utaki are simply just uh, sacred places. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're sacred places where people go to, to pray, to, to honor their ancestors, and to pray um, for, for Okinawa, to pray for their everyday lives, to pray for their family and friends. And I know a lot of the, um, the spiritual leaders in Okinawa, they pray, especially for their children, for their grandchildren, or great grandchildren. I know um, there are a lot of people in Okinawa who pray for me, and I'm very thankful for that. So, um, Utaki, some Utaki are very simple, like the ones you see in the middle here. They're, they're, uh, some of these are, are just, uh, uh, this, the one in the middle here I found while I was uh, walking through the, the mountains in my village here, in my village here. Uh, It's probably a family Utaki or family uh, altar. Um, a lot of Utaki are, are like, they're, they're small, they're kind of hidden away. But then there are also larger Utaki, like the one you see in this corner right here. This Utaki is a uh, famous one because it happens to be in front of the castle. The one on the floor corner over there is perhaps the most famous Utaki. Um, it's called the Seifa Utaki. Um, it's considered to be the most sacred site in all of Okinawa, where uh, the very first Okinawan ancestors uh, landed or arrived in Okinawa. And the one in the far bottom corner there is my personal favorite Kutaki because it's the Kutaki in my home village and I often go there to pray. Uh, so Kutaki are a very important part of Okinawan uh, society, of Okinawan spirituality. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some will talk to you about the models uh, you know, by uh, the United States to build you know, other, other facilities. Um, others uh, have been demolished but are simply you know, kind of lost or forgotten. I asked uh, a friend I know of in Okinawa, she's from Okinawa, which is a pretty big city. Uh, I asked her, oh, so do you have to talk to you in Okinawa? She's born and raised in Okinawa. And she said, she looked at me strange and said, no, we don't have to talk to you anymore. I've never heard of that. I asked another person from the line, an older person, asked them the same question. And they said, yeah, we certainly have to talk to you anymore. Uh, unfortunately, the younger generation just doesn't know about it because they're not, they're not educated. They're not taught these things in, in the schools or anything. And in fact, they're taught that opposite. They're, they're taught that these things are, are stupid or shameful or just not important. So you can see that the, the, the crisis going on in the Okinawan uh, community today, where the younger generation is largely ignorant of their heritage and a lot of the older generation is trying their best to pass on the knowledge, but the force is from both Japan and the United States, uh, you know, much larger and more powerful countries than in Okinawa. Uh, so the, the elders in the Okinawa community are, are running a, a, a huge uphill battle in terms of teaching 